and we're recording. So, yes, he he hello everybody. This is this is Black and Rose. I, I was going to say a funny name, but I couldn't think of one. I'm sort of do it flying by the seat of my pants at this point. But I am joined by a fellow Tat Stop Videos recorder who goes by the name of Hook. Hello, I am Hook. Yes, let's go. Uh, if you've been watching Tat Stop videos and you've been paying attention to the small bit of text in the bottom middle of the screen, I think. Then I don't pay attention. Then <laughs> you should be paying more attention to the video and not the bit of text at the bottom that says our names. <laughs> that yes, is very it, true. This it, yes, this uh, this gentleman is a fellow gameplay recorder of Tat Stop videos, and he is currently working on how many games are you working on <laughs> uh for the recording team well i mean like because you 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 do you do like game code in your own time like you do like the visual novel stuff for one uh well i mean i'm Okay, so you're asking me about like how many videos I'm doing, or well, no, what, what, I'm asking, what I'm asking you about is because um, you because uh, you're working, you've been working on um, a visual novel. Yes. Yes, but I mean, how many of those are you actually working on at the moment? Because I'm pretty sure I've, I'm aware of like about two or three of them. Right now, I'm hard at work on one. The other two is postponed until. The first one's released. Right. Okay. I'll put. I'll. I mean, there's a. There's currently a demo out for it at the moment. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys who are watching this, so you can go check this out. But I have played one of the demos. Um, I need to play the uh, improved demo, uh, which I will be doing soon. And I will say it's shaping up to be something quite interesting. So go check it out, guys. Go show this guy some support. I think this. I mean, the artwork in it is brilliant. It's a little bit flaky at points uh, in the gameplay, but do remember it's still an alpha demo, so there's still work being done on it. But so anything could be be changed. Yes, yeah. There's a lot could be changed in it, but I heavily recommend checking it out. Like I say, I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can go check it out. Anyways, <laughs> how long have we been talking now? Uh, we've been talking for nearly three minutes, and we haven't even started the video yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is Putrefaction. Uh, this was one of the games that was put on the horror indie game list. Uh, for those of you who watched Tat Stop videos would have already seen the edited footage that came out. But as you know with behind the scenes, we pull up the unedited footage and so, uh, so that you can see the game. Um, Hook has not seen this footage before, and I was I the one who it, recorded man. it. <laughs> and Look at the text. Yeah, I think your first, your first response when I pulled this up and I did <laughs> started the screen share was, I hate it already. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway, let, let, uh, let's start this video. It's a, it's, um, it's, a, it's a little under an hour, um, so, but that, that tends to work with how long I tend to do these. Um, so yeah, I mean, you might or might not hear the audio. I do sometimes have a bit of audio audio trouble uh, when I do this, but you, believe me, you're not missing anything. <laughs> I hope not. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I'm gonna pause it for a moment. Yes, <laughs> this is the story. <laughs> a terrible disease attacked the world, causing mon monstrous mut uh, mutations in human body. Yeah, in human body, like not in the human body. This this person obviously doesn't know their English grammar. Uh, Either that, or they just typed it up, like willy nilly. Yeah, which cannot be treated with any known medicine. It was called. Okay. It was called putrefaction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I don't think anyone. Like in this world, besides this dude developing the game, would call it this. <laughs> like I would just leave the name as is and yeah. have it be called something else. Like, okay, and prototype 
the virus is called like black light or something and they don't uh, just call it black light well i mean the thing is is that they tend to come up with names for them they're like project names but it's not the name of the virus itself it's generally just the the idea around it but yeah this is called putrefaction the uh, the speed and size of hang on the speed and size of epidemic was enormous of the epidemic yeah this person doesn't seem to understand the <coughs> And it I'm seemed... pretty sure English is isn't there. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I'm guessing. And it's well, it says down there Oleg Kaz Kazakov, 2015. So I'm guessing this is probably a Russian. Probably. Uh, this, yeah, and it seemed to appear randomly around the world with no sources of spread. Hmm. <laughs> To battle this threat, an organization called, oh, this is brilliant, Brotherhood of Purity. <laughs> Sounds like they they stole it right off of Brotherhood of Steel. Yeah, that was my first thought, but then I sort of thought about it a bit more, and it kind of sounds like the sort of thing that a religious, like, uh, like almost like um, religious white supremacists would be. God, I thought I thought you're gonna say like religious nut jobs of the church, but well, I mean it's it's still not far off. It's cool was to find source of this epidemic and eliminate it. This this grammar is actively aggravating me. <laughs> you are one of the operatives of this organization ordered to investigate point in distant mountain area. <laughs> What the? What does that mean? <laughs> Where a lot of putrid was spotted. <laughs> what the? F a lot of putrid. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Order to investigate point in distant mountain area. Distant mountain area where a what lot of putrid was spotted. What does that mean? I I need to show my friend this and just have him read it aloud. During the search and near target point, I found many traces of infected. After examining this, this traces, an entrance to the underground base was found. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. And now, and now we're, and now we're in the game. With, Couldn't uh, like the game start with the elevator being down, or is there like a voice talking to you? Oh, there's no voice. There's no voice acting in this at all. Okay, so basically you start out like constricted with no movement until the elevator goes down. I think, that, I think like, they're trying to do this sort of anticipation thing. It's like the elevator's going down. Oh no, what horrors are we descending into? When did this game been made in 2015? 2015, so this was five years ago. Okay. I was gonna say if this was like in 2012, I could probably pass this, but like, yeah, this kind of looks like something that would be uh, like the logical step up from like Half-Life graphics. I mean, graphically, it's not too bad. It's not, but like, it needs. I I don't want to say more, but like, well, this is indie developed, developed, so. Oh yeah, I mean, this is probably like developed by one guy. I mean, and that's the thing, like, for one guy, graphically, <coughs> this is too bad. I mean, I'm not too sure about the gun. Yeah, the gun looks boxy. Yeah. I don't know if that's the aesthetic they were going for or not. Oh, don't worry, there, there's better ones. <laughs> oh. Well, I say better. Oh. There's there's better examples of the weird choice of gun. Uh, th this also, is... what what is that on top of the gun? Is that how I, you cock the gun I, back? I don't know. Is that supposed to be like an iron sight? That is a really fat iron sight. I know. <laughs> I'm actually trying to see if I can read what it says on the uh, on the display. Oh yeah. Oh, I picked up an axe <laughs> for some reason. And just like red veiny stuff. In in a in a world where like this whole thing happens, you have fire axe with a wooden handle. Yeah. Oh oh this this is uh this is the first example of the enemies. It just boxes you into a room, and there's some roaring going on. Oh hello. 
Oh, this get okay. I've I've seen this in the. <laughs> Just the animations. Oh god. I I why? Whoa! <laughs> this is way way too many for a tutorial. I. Apparently, I killed two people with one axe swing there. There must be a hit scan happening there. Yeah, I think that, I think there's a bit of a hit, a bit of wonky hit boxes there. It's not going on the axe itself. It's like anything in front of you. Yeah, I think I think it does like the the original Half Life thing of just the melee weapon is just a it just does gun like attacks, but at just it like does minimum range. gun bullet damage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the main thing with this is that <coughs> the there's no there isn't really any random enemies. It's just you move forwards, then you get locked into an area, and then just a swarm of enemies show up. I feel like they're trying to be Doom. Yeah, the trouble is, is that oh yeah, because so it's it's put up these like barriers to prevent progress, and it just uh, dumps a load of enemies on you. I mean, there will be other types of enemies, but yeah. This oh, I've I've seen the video or Tat's videos of it. So. Yeah. Oh, his head came off. <laughs> well, at least they have. Well, they have dismemberment, so. Yeah, like that. That is like actually a thing. That, like you can dismember the body parts. At least it's not like ragdolling effects. Well, th there is to a degree. Well, but I meant. Like I they, meant like you shoot an enemy and they ragdoll immediately. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's it's, or, it's not like immediate ragdoll. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm I'm saying it pretty poorly, but <sighs> yeah, I, th I think like by this point I was sort of sighing a little bit to myself, thinking this. Could have been something interesting. But like I say, like graphically, this is pretty solid, and it makes me wonder if that's where they spent all the effort. And you gotta remember, this is probably one guy that made it. <laughs> Look at that weapon. Wait, what? Hold up. That's a shotgun. Okay, look in the back of that. Okay, I know. Can you pull it out again? Look at the back of that. That is a big hammer. You want to know what the funny thing is? Hmm. The shotgun also doubles as a grenade launcher. That's cool. Okay, see the back of the the shotgun? Yeah. yeah. It's Isn't that something that you pull on the handle of a pistol? <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, yes, new enemies. I mean, these enemies aren't bad, but like, you're. <sighs> There's like, hmm. Yeah, that that was that was the uh, <laughs> that was the RPG. I I I don't know what's like the creatures. They make sense because they're they're all. They all look alike, but like these guys that were wielding cleavers at you. I think the idea they're supposed to be going with here is that these are like infected. Well, it's it's pretty it's a pretty poor job of trying to be infected. Yeah. Because the first enemies you meet, the ones with like the metal mask on them, that's kind of bad. But like these guys here, they're it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's it's passable. Yeah, this was just me like playing around with the dismemberment. But, uh, yeah, I kind of figured. Well, I mean, I wanted to see like <laughs> how how much that worked in case I could put it into the video. I can't even remember if I did put it into the video. I, I think after I finished dealing with this game, I just like cleansed it from my memory. So when I'm thinking about what this dev was trying to do versus what it had to do instead, they were having troubles with enemies, so they couldn't like split them all apart. Mm. 
so they he he was forced to like spawn enemies everywhere. I think in a small boxed in room area. Yeah, I think what he ended up doing, and this might have been a memory saving issue, is rather than spawning the enemies into the game from the start, because I, I later found out that there's specific areas where the enemies spawn, but they they do literally just spawn in from the ether. So it, it kind of makes me wonder if what he ended up doing to like to save memory is to not have them in the game until you reach these spawn points and then it spawns them into the game. And then boxes you in. Yeah, it boxes you in to deal with them. That's that's exactly what, what I was thinking. Because me being a game dev, well, a basic one at that, Yeah. Uh, like, he probably didn't have much experience uh, making this game, but uh, he was passionate enough to do it. Well, I mean, you can see you can see that effort has been put in. Like, c compared to some of the games I've played, and, like, we have a worst games list that I'm gradually working my way through. <laughs> <laughs> Which, um, has shown games that have absolutely no semblance of effort being put in. In fact, uh, one of them is also one that showed up on the horror indie game list, which was Montus. Which is a game that very well deserves having its place on Worst Games, because it's incomplete. Oh, and it's, it's still incomplete after all those years? Yep. But it was recommended to me by one of my friends when it was still in early... in the early alpha, saying, Oh, this is gonna be brilliant, this is gonna be brilliant. And it's still in, it's still in early access, and it's been in early access for about six years. For like a simple game like that, it, like don't get me wrong, it has potential, but like, it's still in early access. So either finish it up or or wrap it up and <sighs> release it. Yeah. I, I think I think what's happens is it's turned into one of these projects that the person has just bailed on it. Oh look, there's a leg. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they, that's not what they meant by break a leg now. No, 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 no. But uh, yeah, when, I mean, when it comes down to to Montus, it is. I, I've I've had this conversation with numerous people. It's a game that has potential but it's unfinished it's glitches all hell i mean when i did the behind the scenes on that with azul uh evil death azul uh for people watching um go and watch that video it was fun more fun than the game was <coughs> and like i ran into a few like game breaking glitches in that and when I say game breaking, like they were game breaking, like in the first twenty minutes. Well, in fact, not even that. Probably, like there's one of the glitches I ran into. You can literally get in, get into in the first room of the game. I think this is, I think this is me getting a bit lost here because <laughs> uh, the game doesn't have a map. It kind of feels like this is the sort of game that really could use a map. <laughs> or at least some, like, dr some sort of, like, direction. Well, I mean... Or obvious direction, like a light source or something. Yeah, like, it could really use something. Like, I can't remember how long I ended up wandering around for in this. Wait a minute. Okay. Oh, yeah, here we go. So... What is... Okay, what is your character's motivation here? Well, from the two paragraphs of story text that we had at the start, the motivation here is that you are an operative for the Brotherhood of Purity. Um, I can't even... I can't say that with a straight voice. Um, and you're here because you're trying to discover the source of the putrefaction. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, it's oh. it's the, the story is literally like one sentence deep. 
But wait, didn't the? It's also kind of uh, like. Oh, what's I, I forgot the name of it, but like it's it says there's like multiple sources throughout the world. Yeah. And you're looking for that source here. I'm guessing like what, it, I'm guessing the point they're going through there is that this is a a possible source of the putrefaction. I mean, it's very possible that as the as the game was being made, the story element was probably sort of bolted on. Like you can clearly see that effort was put in to get the AI to work and the different like the the, the different monsters uh, models in it and how they run. Like this feels like a game that was built from the middle out, like rather than built from beginning to end it was sort of built with hey let's let's build a combat engine and then they just sort of snapped on everything else it does feel it it really does look like that because you can really see where all the effort has gone in like so i well i shouldn't say sorry but the reason why i bring it up is because he, he kind of uh contradicts himself with the story it's it's a valid point that you've raised there like it's not something i really thought about but it, it raises a point of this story of oh hello just bullet holes in the middle of the air <laughs> i think that's from the uh that's what it's, uh, force field that yeah. was blocking you in yeah. and it just didn't go away yeah <laughs> <laughs> Which was a bit of a whoopsie, he thinks. <laughs> but yeah, it's um oh some new enemies. Looks like what happens if Wolverine mutated. <laughs> I'd like to point out as well that they don't have hands, they just have those bony blades. So, is this just the entire game as enemies running up to you and hitting you? Pretty much. Ugh. I mean, near, near the end of the video, it does get a little bit more creative. Oh, but, good. But it gets creative in a way that I would say in a bad way. Oh. Well, let me, let me are there enemies that are, like, gonna be shooting at you constantly? Well, we've had enemies that are capable of shooting, but what I mean is, is that there's a weapon you get later on that's basically the freeze ray from Duke Nukem, or any other game that has a freeze ray in it, and there's an enemy in the game that is only, you can only damage if you freeze their barrier first and then shoot them, but if you run out of ammunition on your freeze ray, you're fucked. Okay, I was about to say, uh... Is it unlimited? Because if it is, that's fine, as long as there's charges. But if it has ammo, then that's that's kind of poor game design. Yeah, right. It's one of the one of the main elements in any game is you have to make sure that the player is unable, is not in a position where they can soft lock themselves. This was a this was a problem that happened a lot in the original Pokemon games. Like, there's a lot of ways you can actually soft lock yourself. I mean, you have to put in quite a bit of effort <coughs> to do it, but there are ways that you can soft lock yourself in that. I, I've watched um, uh, some video. Oh yeah, I've got a mini gun there. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's some ways in that. You, I've actually seen some videos of how you can soft lock yourself on Cinnabar Island. By just by just surfing there and then just like releasing all your Pokemon, it's like well that's it you fucks. <laughs> I gotta say I gotta say though like the AI in this oh hello there's a bit of strange leaping going on there. Like they do I did find sometimes that those enemies that crawl along the ground they do actually try and evade your attacks. Which is pretty good. 
yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. It's, it's got some good design in some places, which is why... But the, ga the yeah. guy tried. Well, I think the thing is, is that he tried more in some areas than others. Like, the overall setting for this is just generic bunker number 8. The sort of thing that you'd see in a lot of, like, uh, indie action games. Or indie shooters. It's just like uh, a hidden bunker or secret space station or something like that. But it all just looks much of a muchness, really. And there's that. <laughs> what the heck is that? That's one hell. That's that's. Uh, is that a graboid? It's like a giant worm. Oh, it is a graboid. A, a what? A grab, a grab. Oh my god, I'm I'm butchering it. The more I say it, it's from uh, Tremors. Oh, the movie. I've, oh, I've seen that film. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> now talk about something uh, far far superior than this. Uh, <laughs> It's been a while since I've seen that film, but it's one of those movies. What the? Uh, I'm sorry. I've got to go. I've got to go back for that. Was that part? Yep. That's lit. There's literally a part of that body that is just has no texture on it. I think I know what that is. Just to see if I'm. Gonna they created the worm, connected it to each other. And then those are the pieces. <laughs> it's just, it's just a, a, a white square. <laughs> okay, so either those are the code blocks that they didn't manage to hide during that, <laughs> or that's part of the model itself. Well, I mean, you, you would probably know more about that kind of process than I would, but I mean, to me, it looks like it's a part of the model that didn't have a skin on it. Well, no. Uh, I don't know much about it, but, like, a source block has all the code in it. Mm -hmm. And so all that code is directly for... for that worm to split apart like that. Mm -hmm. And I guess they didn't hide it good enough. Yeah, that sounds about, that sounds about right. But, I mean, bonus, we have a new area now. We have a cave system. Ooh. And again, like, the, the details on, like, the, gra uh, the graphics, the air the area, like, it's very well detailed. Especially if it's just one guy that did this. And I'm pretty sure these don't look like stock assets. No, it's, it looks like something he actually made. Because you don't, you're not seeing any giant spiders running at you now. <laughs> oh, don't worry, they'll be coming. Oh God, why I have to say something? <laughs> I mean, the, the, the spiders are shot, and to be fair, like the majority of the enemies in this, they don't. You know, even then, they don't look like stock assets. Like, I mean, I've seen horror indie games uh, that have literally just taken the necromorph from Dead Space. Oh, don't even up. tell me about that. I've seen that. It's the, uh, the Curse of Blackwater. <sighs> do you know, do you Where know Necromorph is chasing you around, you can't take itself seriously. Yeah. Ah, and, now, and now we have the demonic buttholes. Isn't that the same worm as... Yep. <laughs> mm. Wandered into we've wandered into the Tremors movie. Oh, and apparently a wall just exploded. For no reason. Yeah. You have defeated sufficient number of buttholes. Wall will explode. I'm gonna keep saying buttholes until it gets a laugh. <laughs> and now we're back in bunker. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I thought, I thought there was more cave system. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, this looks different than the other place, but still, it's still looks like a bunker. I think by this point, uh, 
the enemy types are getting a bit too common. Right, it it threw some new ones right early on, but now it's just the same sort uh, sort of enemy, just multiplied to a ridiculous figure. I mean, I will say, oh, like, uh, oh yeah, go on. Um, about that ice ray you were mentioning. Yep. I just thought of it. Um, so this isn't no like horror survival. This is like a horror shooter. If it was a horror survival, like it would be less enemies, but they're like crank, like practically uh, terrifying mm. to like fight. Well, like there, yeah. And the ice ray, uh, you, it's fine if you can like just get away from enemies to go and find more ammo because that's what a horror survival is. This isn't, and if you need that to kill a certain enemy, and you can't progress, and you're soft locked yourself out because of it, then that's kind of poor game to really now. <laughs> But so that's poor game design. Yeah, like the the thing, like you raised a, a good point there. It's like the idea of you don't need to be swarmed by enemies for it to be survival horror, or for it to be horror for that for that matter. Because horror is about the feeling of threat, and in this game, I don't feel threatened because every I'm being th I'm being threatened by enemies that go down. Oh, hello. <laughs> Well, that's kind of surprising, but like I having just, them. I just wanted to. Actually, what happened there was when that <coughs> was a spawning point. So, what happened is the enemy spawned in, but the AI didn't kick in. Oh, God. That's. That's bad. So, they just stayed there because the AI hadn't told them to start moving out yet. <laughs> I, I forgot that they, they're spawned in. Yeah, they're, like they're not. I, I thought that was like a genuine like thing, but like the more you say it, the more I thought, oh, that's probably a reason why they're all like centered in that one small area. There's a brilliant bit uh, going forwards where the AI is so basic that it funnels all of the enemies down one um, part. Oh, of the I think I've seen that one. And I just isn't that the one with the Gatling gun? Yeah, and I just stand there with the minigun and just like, yep. lay waste of them. Yeah, I, I deliberately put that in the video because that was a that was a scene where I actually had fun. <laughs> oh, this is it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I remember this scene very specifically because I just hang out in this corner back here. Yep, I spawn. remember this one. <laughs> oh yeah, here like yeah, and then I just. I just sort of hang back. Because, like, yeah, they don't come from behind you because they don't spawn in uh, from, like, back locations. They only spawn from the local area. So it's like, okay, there's a few of them there. So I'll just wait in here and then <laughs> it'll come to me. This could have been, like, a good game if it was in the oven a little bit to, like, if it was cooked in the oven more. Yeah. Now oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm not saying it's game the year awards, but like, yep. <laughs> Jeez. And there's new types of enemies that that are now like Yeah. You're introduced and immediately gone because they're treated as cannon fodder. Yeah, this is this is the biggest problem that this game has is that it doesn't treat its enemies as a genuine threat. It treats them as like meat sacks that, that, that it just throws at you, like literal cannon fodder. Yeah, and that, like I know Doom get like does that, but like every enemy in Doom is a passable threat. Like even the basic grunts can be like a passable threat. I mean, yeah, you, you mow them down by the hundreds. Are you talking about Doom, like, the 2D version, or 2016? Um, I suppose it applies to both, really. 
Because like, they're both on the same vein of like run and gun. Well, that was that was the whole point of the the Doom games is that you just run really fast and just gun down enemies like by the thousands. And it was generally fun because there was like a bunch of fun mechanics you could do. And granted, it was probably like this was before Doom 2016. Mm -hmm. But still, like it could have been a decent game had it for not. I don't like it in the middle of its uh, development cycle. That's a rocket launcher. No, it's not. It's a it's a, a blower. <laughs> when it blows missiles. Well, actually, actually, that sounded better in my head. Blows. <sighs> yes. Also, what is this whole no line thing? Yeah, I know. I think I'm supposed to say online, but it's missing the N. And okay, it's a lens flare. <laughs> a random lens flare. In fact, this one also has... Like, was was this supposed to be, like... Was there actually supposed to be ammo, like, counters on the weapons itself, but he didn't put it on? But that's an interesting question, that, because it feels like, like some of those displays should have had something on them. And I, it makes me wonder if that was a scenario of that was an idea that was like a concept that he was working on and then just decided not to do it. I'd also like to point out that firing the regular shotgun seems to do more damage than the grenade launcher attached to it. It I noticed that too, especially when you uh, we're firing at one of those uh, guys with the bladed hooks mm. for hands. Yeah, somehow I don't think he quite balanced the the damage mechanics. I think he was too afraid to actually up the damage on the grenade launcher, but forgot to lower the damage for the actual shotgun. Maybe they maybe just got it in reverse order. Could be. It, it does. It does sound like the sort of thing that could happen. It makes me wonder as well if it was one of those scenarios where... Oh, oh, this is a boss fight. Oh, I forgot there was bosses. Th this is where there's actual challenge. Hello. It has two health bars. One of them was for the turret on its back that has just been destroyed. I like how you were handed with a, gr like, a problem solver. <laughs> what the heck is this Naruto runner doing going back and forth? God knows. <laughs> See? <laughs> I need to double check something on like the Naruto running because I can't remember if it was Naruto that did it first or if it was Sonic that did it first. Because that makes me like really curious. <laughs> Because it, it does, it, it happens in Sonic as well, but it only started happening in the, in the, in Sonic CD was the first time that happened. Like, with the arms flailing back. And I can't remember if Naruto came first. Uh, let me check. Oh, and there, there goes the boss fight. <laughs> Well, the anime came out in 2002. Uh, first chapter was 1999. Uh, Sonic CD. When did Sonic CD come out? So when, so when did uh, Naruto uh, for, uh, first emerge? Uh, 99. The uh, anime came out in 2002. So Sonic did it first, 1993. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's, um, there's the starts, the animated short at the start of Sonic CD uh, shows Sonic running, but there's also a sort of, how, how best to describe 
about it. Like, basically, you can like, charge up your running speed from start, and it just shows Sonic running on the spot. But he sticks his arms uh, back behind himself, as as is done in the Naruto run. And so, that's technically an early example of the Naruto run. Well, shit. So it's that's... That's very cute. Oh, you heard it here. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> it's not the Naruto run. It's the Sonic run. <laughs> so put on your spiky blue hats and <laughs> <laughs> put on your spiky blue hats and start charging Area Fifty One. <laughs> because it's not. It's not the Naruto run anymore. It's the Sonic run. <laughs> Oh, Amazing. <laughs> That's been bugging me for like the last week or so, and I've just never looked it up. <laughs> well, now we did. <laughs> I can't believe I looked it up on a behind the scenes video. <laughs> you see, this is this is how these like this is what I was all saying to you before. This is how these behind the scenes go. Like we have a we have the game here. There's a bit of a behind the scenes of behind the scenes now. <laughs> like we have the game here. And, let's face it, in this instance, it's a, it's a, it's a pile of garbage. Or should I say, it's a, it's polished garbage. Oh, hello. <laughs> I guess he was gonna, he was about to jump. <laughs> the heck is going? He just jumped, like, bollocks first into my face. <laughs> I, I can't even say it was arse first, it was literally just front crotch straight into my face. Which to be fair is quite effective. <laughs> oh yeah, I think by this point I realised that that's the special ability of the rocket launcher is the homing rockets, but you have to lock onto the target first and then press the fire button. And then there's just a green thing flying around. <laughs> And this is apparently like high octane projectile combat. Just step to the left. <laughs> I think I think by this point my mind was sort of going to games are meant to be fun. It it could have been a decent game, like I said. Not like not a game of the year, but... I think, that, I think that kind of makes it worse, though, in the sense that it's a game... Like, there, there's games that I know full well could not have been anything more than garbage. Oh. But then, <laughs> And then there's games like this, where you think, if they just tried a bit harder, if they just, like... Like, well, tried a bit harder, put in a bit more effort, in, so, in some of these places, then it could have been something like pretty interesting, but it's just like it's almost like the the failures of something like this hurt even more. Oh yeah, here come the spiders! There they are. Oh, great! Did they just die in like a few hits? Yeah, they do. Oh geez, I saw one spawn in. Yeah, they literally I like how that guy just like walks in and walks and it's like hey uh, like walks out it's like oh wait was I supposed to be in here <laughs> it's like he just walked into the wrong set <laughs> exactly yeah like, I'm, I'm seeing him pop in yep that's where yeah. like that's what that's why I sort of perched myself here because <clears throat> the, the only spawn points I can see from the left and right. Oh yeah, there we go. See? <laughs> just popped in and it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming at the wrong time. Ah, oh, they have antennae. Interesting. I see, this is where it gets a little bit weird for me because it started out as, like, putrefaction is like a disease. But now we're getting, like, 
spiders. Well, big ass spider things that look more like aliens than mutations. And Did I they ever? Oh, you're kind of breaking up, dude. Am I? Well, the video is. You were starting to. Oh, okay. Uh, just make sure that's all still. Work. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, my 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 ping's gone. As as my ping has died. <laughs> Oh, Discord isn't dying on me. It's not dying on me. I'll just I'll just pulled up the uh, uh the Discord. It's uh the ping's uh shot right up, the connection's gone much lower. I hope it I hope it holds out. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I think oh he went flying. <laughs> well, the picture's blurry, but I can still see green. <laughs> to be fair, you're, you're not missing much else. It's just more uh. of these enemies just throwing their green shit. Uh, <sighs> uh, that's, 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 is that clearing up now? Yep, it's actually clearing up. Yeah, like the, the ping's just coming back now. But as we were saying, this game could have been much more had it if it had more time. I, it, like, here's the thing that makes me wonder. I wonder if this game could have been better if it was shorter. It, I don't think so. Like, the th well, I mean, what I mean is, is like, we're coming up to 40 minutes into the video, so there's still 20 minutes to go. Um, and I didn't reach the end of this game. Like, I reached close. Oh, and there's a, a strange ghost thing. Again, this, okay. is, this is where things get a little bit weird. Because, again, this is supposed to be a disease. And it's gone from disease to clearly mutation, alien things, and now we're going to, like, ghostly things. Like, it feels like this game couldn't decide on a tone to keep. If there's explanations about, like, the ghosts were actually aliens, per se? Well, I don't... Uh, the information on this game is quite sparse. So it's really... Because... It's really quite hard to say. Because... Uh, it it could have... The, the ghost thing... Probably would have worked if, like, they even added a hint of contact saying like, oh, the ghosts were actually uh, aliens uh, sent here and they sent the putrefaction. That's why you're seeing all of it. Well, the thing is, that would have made a bit of sense. Like, this idea of, like, this, putre this putrefaction is, like, an alien-based, like, disease or terraforming agent. Which to... No. Okay. Oh, yeah. The energy gun. <laughs> it's literally brilliant called, name. It's literally called the energy gun, and you, you probably can't hear the sound it makes when you fire the the plasma balls. But it's literally just dump. as if you just, amazing as if you just like fired a Nerf dart. Secondary fire is quite effective. It sends an arc lightning. Hmm. It, do, it does have a bit of a recharge time on it, but. Uh... Oh yeah, I, I hear the the shots. Yeah. <laughs> Just doop, 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 doop. <laughs> Again, like I picked up this gun thinking, oh great. Oh hello. <laughs> I don't think the AI kicked in yet. <laughs> oh god, it didn't. I think you're killing them too fast is what's going on. Yeah. It might also like, he wasn't good. anticipated you uh, killing them all at... <laughs> what the heck? I do love how they just sort of slide into the shot and just slide out. <laughs> oh god, he was T-posing there. <laughs> I never noticed that, but yeah, he was T-posing. I think they spawn in T-Post. 
Yeah, they do. Just for one frame. For one frame, they spawn in T-pose, and then the like the AI kicks in. Like, I'm, I'm spotting it a few times now, now that I'm looking for it. That's really bad. Oh god, now, now I'm just reminded of Prop Hunt. <laughs> just when you start that game, you're just starting as a T-pose scientist. Just, just remember, when I was working on, uh, Excuse me. on, uh, the models, I had to do it in, the uh, T-pose, so... I really, G-mod, whenever I think T-pose, I think of Blender. <laughs> well, I mean, I found out from ta uh, Tats recently why the T-pose is so important, and why that's, like, the default state, is because it's the, it's the easiest state to work from. Mm-hmm. Right, that, that, I had no idea that was a thing, but when I think about it more, right, that, that does kind of make sense. Oh, hello. I'm not quite sure why they jump down and then just sort of sit there. AI broke. Yeah, I, I, it really does sort of highlight just how basic the AI. I mean, I, I shouldn't really keep saying, I, I shouldn't keep ragging it's, the AI because I've never like programmed an AI before. I haven't either. I'm still going to rag on it, but. <laughs> well, yeah, because I I feel like you're you're kind of chewing, or chewing more than you can eat here. Yeah. It's, Is it's, that how the thing goes? <laughs> But I suppose I suppose the best way I can think of it is it's kind of like I've shown up to a restaurant and all I'm eating is like twelve courses of bread. It's not even like the garlic bread; it's just bread that you find in in the store. I mean, it's kind of like um, it, it's kind of like if I was eating like homemade bread, but it's just the same bread for twelve courses. It's like yeah, it's. It, it's, it, yeah, it's filling me up, but it's it, it was it was pretty nice the first, like the first the first bit to have um like some homemade bread because homemade bread tastes good, but by like the like the fifth course it's like I want something else, and then and then all you can and then all you just see this is actually how I felt by this point is that I could just see stretching before me more courses of bread. I will say this is where things do get a little bit different. Oh, good. So like, we're we're dumped on this, like moving platform. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say elevator, but I can't really call it an elevator. Eh, anything that you can't really think of. I, I, it's usually called moving platforms. Oh, yeah, here we go. <sighs> what so, the fuck? Yeah, so these these ghost things are sort of spawn in and charge at you and you can't hit them <laughs> it's just a lot of this I don't get me wrong it's different but it's not different in a fun way it's like oh you ex you exceeded my expectations but I'm not surprised well it's kind of it's it's kind of like, going back to the uh, the bread comparison, it's kind of like, oh, they've come out with brown bread now instead of white bread. But it's still bread. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still, like, because the game isn't giving any explanation, like, we're now coming upon what looks like a ruin, like, an underground ruin. It real. At least have some story after each like loading in, so you can be caught up on what's going on. Otherwise, you're just having to guess. Like I, I get the whole like showing, not not telling bit, but it's not showing. You really anything. need to tell. Well, that's the thing. It, like, it's like showing, not telling. Is well, no, you're showing a ruin. Okay, what's this ruin? I don't know. It didn't tell me. Yeah, that, and that's the thing is that like, because I mean, 
like I've spoken, we've spoken about this a little bit before with like the visual novels that you've done is the showing not telling, and the showing not telling is generally the preferred way of doing things, but sometimes you do have to tell. And exactly. And this person's not doing either. Ah, the freeze gun. And there's, and here's my my favorite bit about it is that, I. Uh, like I'm in no way like uh, expert at game design. I'm just trying to go my own way. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing about like showing and not telling is that here you really need to tell, and what? and things that you do need to tell, you need to tell them and then have other people figure it out if that's what you want. Otherwise, just go for it. Oh god, they're ugly. <laughs> god, nice big close up there. But, I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's a valid point you're raising. I mean, the point I was saying is that it's better to do show don't tell. But if you're not going to do the show don't tell, you need to do the tell bit. And what we're getting here is we're getting neither. Like right, we're being shown stuff, but there's not enough context to know what the stuff is. So we need a bit of telling there to sort of fill in the gaps and. It's not there. <laughs> I mean, it, it. I mean, like with the visual novels that you've been doing, like it's a bit of a different concept because it's a visual novel. It's basically like a book, right? You can't. Like I'm, I'm telling a bunch of bunch of stuff, but it's like for later. Oh yeah, but I mean, the point is, is that in a visual novel and in a story, all you have is the tell bit because there's there isn't so much visual element. I mean, yeah, a visual novel does have artworks in it, but even that, unless it's, like, uh, animated, like a movie kind of thing, you can't get away from the fact that you have to do a lot of telling. But this is a game. Like, this is a game that you're interactive with, that you're an active participant in. At this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, like, why am I even here? I'm yeah. shooting these guys and I'm in this room, but what is going on? But like even even Doom had story elements to it. Like they, there wasn't much story elements, but it there was enough given there to say that you was the the Doom Marine who was like basically going to going into hell. Like Hell's Gate had been opened and demons were flooding out of it. It's like okay, so all of these creatures are like creatures from hell and we're going to sort them out. It's like, okay, fair enough. But this is basically just said, here's a bunker. They think putrefaction. There's a source of putrefaction here. And at the start it made sense because you had people and like things that could conceivably be mutated people. But now we're getting into almost a territory that's it's not really when we look at that. Oh, are those things that the that you need the ice beam for? Yeah, you have to freeze the barrier. Um, <sighs> That's terrible game it. design. Yeah, you can't damage it any other way. Uh, I mean, th this is me just like figuring it out. I'm just firing whatever I've got at it. Like either either have it to where like your weapons have to do a lot of damage to actually shoot it, and with the ice beam. Or make the ice beam have infinite ammo. Like this is mm. this is uh, this is not fair. Well, the thing is, there's also the other problem is that I think if you freeze it, I think you only have a limited time to actually kill it before it That's puts its not barrier fair. back up. I think I can't remember. Okay, so while you're trying to figure this out, uh, there's are you are are you familiar with Warframe? Uh. Kind of, yes. There's a certain enemy that's immune to all damage except for uh, one thing, and that you'll need to uh, do that thing uh, to drop its weapon so it can actually. Oh, yeah, just so you can actually. <laughs> yeah. So you can actually kill it. Mm -hmm. And it will pick up its weapon again. But you still have the option to uh, do it again, uh, with no, with no downsides. Mm -hmm. All, all your downside is your time. 
And that that's that's a good way to do it because there's no restriction on doing it other than time lost. And and having the ice gun just be limited ammo on top of uh, recharging shield is not fair. Well, I mean, here's the thing, like, this is a scene now where there's a few more of these things. <sighs> what? Three? No. Nope. Four. There's five at the moment. Why? Six. And when they die, they just... <laughs> the AI does, does just ragdoll them. I remember that, remember you were saying before about the rag doll, yeah, they just fall over. <laughs> this is this is unacceptable. I think this is at the point where like the video's nearly finished. Um but I don't finish the game. I think there's another boss in this game that I never saw. But I mean this is the point where I feel like that the guy probably gave up on it. Like I just wanted to get it done. Like, he probably... Yeah, honestly... More, more of them keep spawning in. <laughs> the... Like, he, he... I don't want to say, like, he was bored of this project, but, like... I, I would go as far as to say he was probably bored of this project. Well, I mean, when you, when you put time and money into something like this... Like, what I'm doing right now... Like, I've, I've already spent time and money on it, and I'm still, uh, I'm still working on to, like, get it perfection. Here, it's another story. I, I mean, like, this, this isn't, like, a slight against you or anything. I strongly suspect by the end of that, end of your project, you will be tired of it. You will be bored of it. Because that's a very, oh, I'm... that's a very common thing to happen. He is still walking with one leg. I I, I don't or I, I agree on it, but like what keeps me motivated is uh like people reading it and then like I'm high key hoping people would also do cosplays of it if it was popular enough. So kinda of like the, the the feedback that you're getting is sort of keeping you motivated. Yes. Which is, is often why people do demos, early alphas and like early access, things like that, is to get people interested in it. But it's also a good way of keeping the motivation going uh, during the project. Like, um, one of the biggest things I've learned from uh, Yahtzee Croshaw, who does the Zero Punctuation, is that but, uh, one of the biggest problems in writing a book is yourself because it's very easy to start a project but to finish a project that's another story right oh, another loading screen you see this is a point where they could have put some story in it was on that loading screen but they just did And we have more ruins and mystery portal things. And more of these things. Like these are places with a de facto enemy now. And again, like right, limited ammunition. Sorry about that. Ask her. <laughs> Looking at this now, this hurts to look at. Oh god, there's more than what the? I mean, to be fair, like as I was, like, as I was saying about um, like the starting of project, like. We've, we've spoken of quite a few times about like the current project you're working on, and honestly, like it, it's it's very much still in the early stages. But I, honestly, I do think that there's a lot of potential there. But I think you I think you've you've got an idea that you've, you've 
thought out, you put all the way start again, that you thought through rather well. And I think it, it's something that I'm actually quite curious to see what you do with it. I'm I'm just kind of worried about like the the other half of it and seeing if people would honestly like it or not. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's that's understandable, really. Like, especially if it's something that you put in so much effort and passion into. Like, it's kind of like how I'm, how I, how I think like um, J.K. Rowling must have felt when she did Harry Potter. I like, wrote the first Harry Potter book. I'm just thinking, like, are people going to like this? Because, I mean, if you look at it on paper, it's literally just a child, um, basically child going to wizard school. It's like, that doesn't sound like much on paper. Didn't she also take the idea from, like, another... Pretty sure she did. I'd like to point out, I never really found out how to deal with these enemies. You think the ice gun would have worked? Apparently it did, but it doesn't give any visual representation other than the enemy slows down. Oh yeah, I died. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> yeah, I think this was at the point of the game where I was like, you know what, fuck it. Oh, and that, <laughs> and that—that's the end of the video. Uh, let me just uh. Find a, a choice. For, oh, there we go. A, ch a choice frame t to leave it on. <laughs> During a search of near target point. Jeez, During this a search is... near target point. Found many traces of infected. After examining these traces, an entrance to the underground base was found where all infected probably came from. So, yeah, the, the point you made is valid because they started out by saying sources of putrefaction were all over the world and now it's saying where all infected probably came from <laughs> amazing it's contradicted its own continuity in the second paragraph of its own story <laughs> of a two paragraph story i i try to avoid contradictions in my stories and this is literally the first, like, in the intro, that it contradicted itself. Well, this is, this is the point of, it's, the first paragraph was before this frame that, said the, that set the story, and now it's the second paragraph, and it's, just, it's already contradicted its own story. <laughs> oh, Oleg Kaz Kazakov. Wherever you are, we don't hate you. Just your game. Well, I th hate's probably the wrong term for it, but I I'm not. I I don't hate it. I'm just sad for it. It could have been something more. With a little bit, a little bit more effort, a little bit of tweaking, this could have been like an indie Doom game. Um, I'll need to be getting going soon. Oh uh, yeah, that that's fine. Like, uh, how long has this video been going on for? Oh, blindly, one hour and thirteen minutes. Yeah, let's wrap this up then. So, this was putrefaction. Uh, find your final thoughts. Uh, if you want this game, don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much sums it up. But anyways. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was Putrefaction. This is Behind the Scenes. I'm Black and Rose, and this was Hook. Uh, jo uh, join us for this one. Thank you for joining me uh, for this uh, game, <laughs> I suppose. No problem. <laughs> but, uh, and yeah, so take, uh, take care, folks. I will see you next time. Bye bye. Later.